The United States is investing billions, if not trillions of dollars, to modernize its nuclear arsenal. This modernization effort aims to ensure its nuclear systems will be able to protect the U.S. and its allies for decades to come, motivated at least in part to address a changing geostrategic environment. But how much do these plans account for a changing geophysical environment? Are U.S. nuclear weapons vulnerable to climate change? To begin answering these questions, Carnegie has released a new paper that examines the potential mission-altering impacts of climate change on the U.S. nuclear deterrent. The paper demonstrates that climate change could have detrimental impacts on each leg of the U.S. nuclear triad, the nation's ballistic missile submarines, intercontinental ballistic missiles, and bomber aircraft. Take the submarines homeported at Naval Submarine Base Kings Bay, the Atlantic hub of the ballistic missile submarine fleet. Kings Bay is vulnerable to sea level rise and flooding, which under various climate change scenarios are projected to increasingly inundate the base's waterfront facilities and roads connecting a key nuclear missile facility to the waterfront. These rising waters will likely pose challenges to the base's capacity to service and maintain the modernized Columbia-class submarines, which are slated to enter service in the 2030s and help execute the U.S. deterrence mission until later this century. These climate change effects may also prevent the submarines from entering port at any given time. With only two bases equipped to fully support the ballistic missile submarine fleet, this could pose serious issues for the broader deterrence mission of the submarine leg of the U.S. nuclear triad and potentially undermine the health and stealth of the fleet. Additionally, one of the primary drivers of sea level rise itself, the melting of ice sheets and glaciers, could have a profound impact on the submarine mission. Uh, for example, the United States is not known to conduct ballistic missile submarine deterrence patrols in the Arctic. To launch a nuclear weapon, a submarine would have to surface, break through thick layers of Arctic ice. While other U.S. submarines have surfaced in the Arctic, its ballistic missile submarines have not likely due to the associated operational challenges and potential damage it could inflict on the multi-billion dollar systems. The rapid melting of Arctic ice and prospect of more ice-free months per year, however, may minimize and at times eliminate this surfacing challenge. If so, the United States may look to expand its ballistic missile submarine deterrence patrols to the Arctic due to potential operational advantages in a contingency. So how might the United States better prepare for the likely dangerous convergence of climate change and nuclear weapons? First, the United States should conduct climate change vulnerability assessments of all its nuclear installations and facilities to determine how climate change could impact the unique nuclear systems, operations, and activities at each site. Second, the United States should invest in dynamic climate change modeling and in both interagency and non-governmental partnerships to ensure U.S. nuclear decisions and planning are informed by the most accurate climate change projections. Third, the Department of Defense and other agencies should be required to complete forward-looking studies of potential climate change impacts on any future nuclear actions, including the construction and deployment of modernized nuclear systems like the Columbia-class submarine. Fourth, the United States should adopt a mission-level focus in its climate adaptation planning and establish a work stream specifically focused on the nuclear mission. And finally, the United States should integrate climate change scenarios into nuclear planning to simulate potential climate nuclear crises and develop mitigation and adaptation plans. To learn more about the convergence of climate change and nuclear weapons, check out Carnegie's latest paper, available on our website and in the link below.